In this video lecture, we are going to discuss the physical and chemical properties of lipids. Lipids include both fats and oils. Fats are solid at room temperature, whereas oils are liquid at room temperature. The fat that is present naturally in food is also referred to as invisible fats. Examples of this would be the milk fat found in dairy products, um, the fat found in poultry, and the marbling that's present in meat products. Visible fats, on the other hand, are those such as the fats found in butter, shortening, cooking oil, and margarine. Lipids can also be classified based on their chemical structure. Four different classifications chemically include sterols, so think cholesterol, phospholipids, your glycerides, such as your mono, di, and triglycerides, and the individual fatty acids. The majority of food fats are in the form of triglycerides. From the visual of the chemical structure of triglycerides, you can see that a triglyceride has a water-soluble glycerol backbone with three fatty acids attached. A monoglyceride would just have the one fatty acid attached, and a diglyceride would have two fatty acids attached. Now let's take a closer look at the fatty acids. Fatty acids can either be saturated or unsaturated. So a saturated fat is one that is completely saturated with hydrogens, meaning that every carbon, or C, has as many hydrogens, or H, attached as possible. This also means that there are no carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds present. Saturated fats are most often solid at room temperature. Examples of saturated fat include butter, meats, and margarine. Unsaturated fats, however, are those that are not completely saturated with hydrogens. Unsaturated fatty acids tend to be liquid at room temperature, so these would include your oils. This is due to the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds that are present in the unsaturated fatty acids. The number of carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds further classify the fatty acid as either monounsaturated or polyunsaturated. Can you tell me the difference between a mono and polyunsaturated fatty acid? Fats also provide the body with essential fatty acids, and these essential fatty acids can only be consumed from the diet. These include the linoleic, which is also called the omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid, and the linolenic fatty acid, which is also referred to as the omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid. These two essential fatty acids are the bottom two pictured here on the slide. The melting point is the temperature at which the solid fat becomes a liquid. Fats that have a high melting point are those that are solid at room temperature. Oils have a lower melting point and are liquid at room temperature. Long chain fatty acids and saturated fatty acids will have a higher melting point. So the solid fats will have fewer points of unsaturation or those carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds, therefore they are more saturated. From this visual, which fatty acid do you think would have the higher melting point? Hydrogenation is the addition of hydrogen to the points of unsaturation, or those carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds, to make the oil more saturated and thus more solid at room temperature. Hydrogenation alters the melting points of the fatty acids by increasing their saturation with hydrogen. Hydrogenation also increases the plasticity or the moldability of the fat and the amount of trans fatty acids. Fully hydrogenated oils do not contain double bonds, so no trans fats can be formed. However, fully hydrogenated fat is too hard, um, not plastic. 
Uh, hydrogenation is the process by which shortening and margarine are made. And you can see here at the bottom of your slide, the label, it clearly reads partially hydrogenated soybean oil. Rancidity is the chemical spoilage of fatty acids that occurs from the exposure to undesirable environmental factors such as high heat, oxygen, and water. Oxidative rancidity happens when a fat is exposed to an excessively high level of heat or when it spends too much time in an environment that contains oxygen. Most often, the unsaturated fatty acids of the triglyceride are the most susceptible to oxidative rancidity. Hydrolytic rancidity is the breakdown of the fat that is related to the exposure of the fat to water. When triglycerides are hydrolyzed, they break apart into their glycerol backbone and the free fatty acids. The release of the free fatty acids can produce the undesirable odors and flavors if these fatty acids are short chain fatty acids. It is these fatty acids that will, produ will produce the rancid odor and flavor. So how do we prevent rancidity or the spoilage of fats? Some fats, such as butter and margarine, are stored in the refrigerator. Lipids need to be stored without light, moisture, and air, as those are the most likely culprits of rancidity. Antioxidants may also be used to prevent rancidity, as they prevent oxidation, which can lead to the oxidative rancidity. Citric acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, and beta carotene are all natural antioxidants, where there are also four synthetic antioxidants approved by the FDA as a food additive. If you look here at the label for the Crisco shortening, what are the two antioxidants used? Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned a thing or two.